Hello and welcome to this build analysis video of the Airfix Focke-Wulf 190A8 in 172nd scale. I bought this kit for just two reasons. One, it was cheap, and two, I wanted to practice modelling with an airbrush. Uh, and three, I don't own it or didn't already own it, and uh, I quite like buying kits. And four, I, I quite like the Focke-Wulf 190 anyway, and and uh, yes. Uh, and, and five, I definitely have an addiction for buying kits. But anyway, just those two reasons that I mentioned. Check out the unboxing video I did for this kit if you haven't already, should appear above you and in the description below. Spoilers, there was some notable warping on the fuselage of this, so clearly something's not quite right, and I was a bit concerned. Um, I was right to be, but all will be revealed in due course. If you're new here, then my build analysis videos are not me talking about every single part to every single part, it's the general gist of things. If you see me do something and you want some clarity on it, then just put in the comments below and I will do my best to answer and hopefully, hopefully shed some light on the situation and also don't forget to like, subscribe and all the good stuff. Anyway, onto the video. Details of the kit are on screen now. This is as per the FX website and the box itself. So 53 parts, 2013 tooling. So at time that I built it, it was a little over 10 years old because I started this in December. One decal scheme. And for the price, this version was the set from Aldi, which was sold at six quid. That includes four bin fillers, a sticky bin filler and a paintbrush. However, uh, this is not part of the main Airfix range. So it's 8 99 for the kit on its own. All of the construction is done with the usual side cutters, just removing all the parts that are required and the cement of choice will be the Ravel Contactor. It's just the one that I'm used to and it's the one that I quite like, but I always like to show that at the start of the video so you know what sort of thing I am doing to get that far. And so construction itself begins with the cockpit, which is reasonably well detailed with a little seat, uh, some rudder pedals and a control stick. Nothing too impressive. I have of course did not want to use the paints that come with the kit. I'm going to be brush painting the interior with this Hataka RLM 66 Black Grey. The instructions on this one very much tell you to only use the four paints that the kit provides, which means of course it isn't correct. I have taken these painting instructions from partly my own knowledge and partly from some online instructions that are for a different kit. It was actually the Edouard one because I trust that they're more accurate with which colours you should paint the interior. Uh, given that it's a starter set, I'm already out with the drill, drilling holes for, uh, they are pods on the top wing, they're bulges to fit the cannon I believe, but they need to be drilled out fairly early on, which for a starter set, not great. Yes, this is sometimes advertised as a starter set, other times it's as a gift set, it's somewhere in between, probably. Anyway, um, I made a mistake and as you can see here, I painted RLM 66 into the wheel wells when in fact it should be RLM 02. What an idiot. Uh, that was just entirely me not paying attention. I think I had a YouTube video on at the time and just got distracted so I had to go over it with RLM 02 but hey it happens no harm done. There are two transfers for the instrument panel. They are perfectly fine. These are cartograph transfers so absolutely no concerns with their quality. Being put on a dark grey background, they're not massively visible, but then there's not much room inside the cockpit that you can see anyway, so it's nice to have something there. I'm glad that it's included. What I'm not glad for is having to stick on cannon like this. Yes, it is more appropriate for the aircraft. You just stick them in the wheel well and you can see them and then that's all fine, but I'm a bit clumsy. And uh, spoilers, all four guns ended up being broken at some point. So you can see here the outer two are already broken. Well, I broke the ones in the wing route shortly afterwards as well. Right, so now we've come to the warped fuselage. Uh, I do show how bad this was, but I'm also trying to fix it at the same time. So there is a little bulkhead that is already glued in that has exhausts on it. And then the cockpit was glued into the half of the fuselage where I thought it would be easiest. Um, when I say easiest I mean it, it still slightly bends forwards but uh, not as bad as the starboard side so I've clamped the rudder and you can see how much this is bowed how far the front comes out 
to fix this isn't a big issue, but it's not something that I would expect a beginner to know how to do or to want to do. So I've started at the tail end. So, well, not exactly on the tail. It's actually where the uh, fuselage joins back together after the cockpit. So just behind where the tape is now, applying a little bit of cement and then make sure it's nice and tight and tape it. Work forwards and do the same thing. Work forwards, do the same thing and just keep on going until it is more or less intact. I'm also using the wings as a guide because ultimately it's going to have to sit like this afterwards. So everything is taped there. That's not me gluing the wings on, by the way. That is just me placing it there, holding it there with tape in the same way that I'm clamping the tail. And it's just it's, it's fine. It's not a difficult fix. It's just a bit tedious when I wanted this kit to be a very quick and easy thing to do in a weekend. And it is also doing this part of the kit that caused me to break off the cannon because I was constantly working on the fuselage, had to keep the wings there to make sure everything is tight. So it's kind of all linked into the problems that I had with this build are all based on this incredibly warped fuselage. I mean you can see it when it came out the box in the unboxing video clearly something's gone wrong and it's warped and they've just chucked it in the box and sold it anyway. Now my understanding of these kits for the Lidl and Audi sets is that they are made in considerably greater numbers than Airfix normally do. I don't know if that's the same factory but they just lower the standards or, or what or how it works or whether it's cheaper plastic. I don't know but but what I do know is if you're going to sell this to somebody who doesn't really know what they want, they just came in for their usual Aldi shopping, vegetables and trombone, and they take this home, can't get the fuselage to sit right, and don't want to partake in this hobby again. And that is somebody that you've lost just because you cheaped out on the quality of production. Or maybe they've already made a kit, it's from a different company, but they've never built Airfix, and now they're not going to ever again, because what should have been a nice, simple, enjoyable build took them too long, and they couldn't work out why the fuselage wouldn't go together properly. And anyway, right, rant over. Um, I just found it very frustrating, and I, th there really isn't much of an excuse for it. So anyway, uh, the aircraft was primed. You just saw me there showing it off in the camera, the Tamiya Grey Primer. I usually do all of my priming downstairs, where it's a little bit better ventilated but the lighting isn't as good so I apologies for not showing it on camera but it's just a very convenient way of priming the aircraft and for the colouring of the actual aircraft itself I am using the Hataka brush paints again thin down a little bit where necessary with some Hataka thinner and this is RLM 76 going on first and then RLM 75 being painted on top and the instructions say to paint the underneath of the horizontal surface, tail surfaces uh, in RLM 75. I mean, they call it 27, but it's RLM 75. I don't know if that's correct, but it's such an oddly specific thing to state that I thought I'd probably do it, and I couldn't find any references to say otherwise, so there we go. And I'm painting this as if I'm pre-shading. I'm not. I just wanted to practice. I wanted the feel of the airbrush for when I choose to do some pre-shading in this way, which is something I would like to experiment with, just never have, having only had an airbrush for about a year or so. Breaking the brand loyalty for a moment then, and we have some Vallejo Model Air RLM 74, because I don't have a Hataka RLM 74, and that is the only reason. So I popped down to my local shop, which sells Vallejo paints, and purchased this one. And this was free-handed on, so this is freehand camouflage rather than the usual, and I also mottled as well, but I found that the footage was unusable, it was a complete mess, uh, it was mostly just my thumb and an airbrush, but as you can see here, there has been a bit of mottling going on as we move on to the decals. Once again, because this is one of the Starter Stroke gift set versions, they are very minimal. There is no real stenciling, just the main marking, so the brown six and squadron marking there. And we have just basically top and bottom crosses and very, very little else. The swastikas that are applied are from my own collection because I like my aircraft to look a little bit more accurate and having a blank tail just, it just bugs me visually. Uh, that is the only reason why I like putting them on. They're from a... Uh, an extra decal set if I recall correctly and I do. 
And construction is now nearing completion, so we are moving on to the sundry parts. I didn't actually mention the varnish. I gloss varnished the entire thing with Vallejo varnish, and then matte varnished it afterwards to secure the decals. There we go. Now I've mentioned it. Anyway, undercarriage goes on. Again, a little bit fiddly. It's the vertical leg itself, and then a support strut. And I found it a little bit tricky to get the leg sitting quite right, actually. It always liked to turn. It felt more natural that way than it did accurately. And then on to the propeller assembly and a public service announcement. The Luftwaffe did not paint propeller blades and assemblies black. They did not. They just did not. They were painted in RLM 70 black green. If you are painting your German propeller blades black, you are making baby Jesus cry. You are angering the alien overlords that will soon take over the planet. You are forcing Google to pursue more aggressive advertising strategies on YouTube videos. And you are thus deserving of a tutting. Okay, but on a more serious note, yes, they are actually RLM 70. However, a lot of kits, basically the starter set versions of kits that are limiting the number of paints they use, will tell you to paint them black. And it is one of the biggest bugbears I have. They just don't look right in black. I know black green is a dark green, but still, it is green, not black. Okay, right. The finishing touches can be applied. So I was gluing the propellers to still move. Uh, that is sort of important to me and, and to nobody else. You don't have to, but it's a very, very small amount of glue needed to get this to actually spin right. And the whole assembly can then be glued onto the front of the aircraft. And some RLM 66 is painted on the, I don't want to call it the dashboard, you know what I mean, the uh, the bit in front of the pilot. You may also notice that I have completely failed to glue the aiming reticle which should go up through here. Uh, I got so distracted in trying to get the fuselage to fit right that I f completely forgot. Just completely forgot. But anyway, it's, uh, it's not noticeable once you put the canopy on and uh, I actually forgot that I'd omitted it until I watched the footage back. So yeah, clearly not a problem. Uh, this is the more aggressive way of gluing a canopy on using Revel Contactor because of course it could instantly melt uh, or fog up the plastic if I get it in the wrong place. Should really use something like Clearfix, but uh, hey, sometimes laziness will prevail. And now the reason why I like the propeller blade to spin is because of this. Applying the hub decal, uh, the white spinny bit, so whereas the uh, Allies liked yellow tips, the Germans just like to confuse everyone with spirals, and it of course completely failed. The theory was there, you put it on the tip, you turn it, and it will all line up, and nope, uh, I couldn't prevent it, it was just going to be about an hour of moving this sodding thing around, trying to get it to more or less line up, but the end result, to my eyes, is quite pleasing. And so aside for a few other little bits that I didn't film, such as painting the exhaust panels, uh, that is the kit done. And here it is, on the spinny table of completion. And well, you know what? I'm going to pat myself on the back and go, ow, I've got whiplash from a show the other night, so that's actually a really painful thing to do. Oof. Uh, no, um, I think it's all right. I think it came out quite well. This is the first time I've freehanded German camo and, uh, well, like this. Previously, I had made a Messerschmitt 262, which had a little bit of mottling, but I, it had the, 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 the angular, um, I don't know what they'd call it, but, you know, the, the angular camouflage that they used, whereas here it is freehand. And, yeah... I'm really happy with the end result. It absolutely could have been better. I had problems with the RLM 76 that I didn't show, but it kept on clogging the airbrush, which is something that that paint in particular does. Uh, probably will switch to a Vallejo one for future aircraft. And of course, there was the extra faff of having to sort out the fuselage and the real pain in the backside of having to keep gluing on the cannons because every time I pick up the aircraft, I knock another one of them off. But hey, that last one is not the kit's problem. That is mine. Final thoughts then, is this kit worth it? Well, at £6, if you can get one that doesn't have a fuselage that's trying to go in completely different directions, then yes, absolutely. Uh, at 8 99 on the normal airfix range, yep, absolutely fine as well. It's a pretty enjoyable build for a weekend. This actually took me a lot longer, but that is because I was putting things off. It was one of those kits that just kept on fighting me, and I know a lot of that was just myself. So the fuselage was putting me off. Once once I got that far, uh, I just got frustrated with it. The paint then made me get frustrated with it. It kept clogging the airbrush. I had to give that a deep clean. 
that's not not to do with the kit at that point that is just to do with my experience of building it but yes uh, it is a nice simple build if you just want something to, to chuck out in a weekend as i say uh, i did not put any notable weathering on it i didn't even put exhaust streaks on it i just wanted to build it and to practice modeling and for that yes definitely which then i guess leads to the score uh yes i am trying to remember to give a rating to each of the kits that i show on the channel it's sometimes difficult because i just get too excited uh but hey that is me so here we go then the airfix fuck off 190 a8 starter set as available from audi i give a solid you don't have anything from the allied side no no that sort of thing wouldn't interest me at all i'm afraid <laughs> out of nine Right, there we go. That is it. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do. If you liked it, like it. If you disliked it, disliked it. But please at least tell me why in the comments below and maybe share the video with somebody that you also dislike. You could even become a channel member like these people on screen who support the channel with a direct payment, which goes straight into my buying too many kits to fit in my house fund. You guys are fantastic and please don't report it to the landlord. Have an enjoyable rest of your existence and hopefully you will spend some of it on this channel. Until then, goodbye.